Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today to review the Prosa i3 Mark II 3D printer. Now let me say first of all that this is an open source printer but I have one of the original ones, one of the authentic ones that's made by Prusa and I will also say that I bought the model that is fully assembled. I think it cost about $900 for the fully assembled one. You could save a couple of hundred dollars if you got the kit and put it together yourself. But I have been burned so many times on printers that did not work. What I was hoping is, is that buying the fully assembled one, I would maximize the chance that I could get a printer that would reliably print for me. I have had this printer now for a couple of months and I will say finally, finally, I have found a printer that works, okay? I've gotten burned really badly in the past on 3D printers that just flat out I could not get to print reliably. I will say that after a couple of months of playing with the Prusa i3 Mark II, I am extremely, extremely happy. Okay, now this is the thing. If you look at the Prusa on any performance parameter that you look at, it's not going to have the best in the business. It doesn't have the highest resolution prints. It doesn't have the largest build volume. It doesn't have all of these different things that you'll find in other uh, uh, more advanced or more expensive printers. So why do I like this one so much? I like this one so much because it works, okay? It just works. It worked right out of the box. I got it out of the box. I plugged it in, I stuck the SD card in, <clears throat> and I printed the demo uh, files that were on the printer. They printed perfectly right out of the box. No tweaking, no adjusting, no fine tuning, it just worked right out of the box. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about the nightmares I had with the other printers that I tried to get working. And a lot of things I could resolve, but always what was the challenge was getting that first level of the print to stick to the build plate. And for that first level of the print to stick to the build plate, there's sort of two things that you really need. The build plate needs to, well, there's three things. It needs to be flat, which means it needs to be something like glass or some very rigid material so it's flat. And then the build plate needs to be level so it's not in there askew a little bit. And then the, no the gap between the nozzle and the build plate on that first level has to be really perfect. So you've got to kind of have those three things for your printer to work. Now in the past I would have good build plates so they were flat, but it was always a challenge to keep the build plate uh, level. And it's almost like you would have to level it every time you printed. And not only would you have to level it every time you printed, but then you would have to set the gap of the nozzle. And so it was just always a challenge to get that just fine-tuned in to where you would have that first level, that first level of your print stick to the build plate. So what's different about the Prusa than the other printers that I've tried? It seems to have this ability to automatically level the build plate. And what it does is it has a sensor on uh, the print head and when you start a print, it goes to the four corners of the build plate and it makes a measurement. So it sort of sees where the build plate is. And then it has a feature that it calls, calls an auto level feature. Well, I don't think that it actually changes or actually levels the build plate, but I think that it just superimposes into the slicing software where it knows the build plate is. And so if the build plate is slightly askew, it builds that into the algorithm for printing such that it prints as if it were virtually flat. And so it seems to me like that it, uh, it is creating sort of a virtually uh, level build plate through the software. But you know what? It just works. And in printing with this thing for two months, I have never had a failed print that it just absolutely the, the, the prints stick to the build plate. Now, now one of the things that I mentioned that, that, that the Prusa does is this auto level or this virtual level that it is, it is always working on. The other thing that's really critical is on that first level, how far is the nozzle from the build plate? And what this printer has is it has an ability to fine tune that 
during the actual printing of the first level. And so what you do is you just hit a button there on the front panel and you go to live tune the z-axis and then as maybe it's printing the skirt or as it's printing a brim you can see that first level go down. If you see the profile of that first level is kind of round you know that you're too far from the build plate so you just dial the nozzle down a little bit until you see a nice squished out flat line. Similarly if you're getting a really squished out flat line and it's not putting material down that it's kind of uh, either not coming out or coming back onto the nozzle you know that you're too close and so you need to back off a little bit and so you can just watch that first level go down you can tune the knob until you just get that beautifully squished out flat line that's coming off of the <coughs> coming off the print head and boom you can dial that in in the first little bit of the first layer and then the first layer goes down not only because the build plate is level but it goes down perfectly because that gap is is sort of tweaked right at the last minute and and with those two features what I'm finding is this thing just really really works and so I'm really excited because this year I will be finally able to incorporate a 3d printer into my high school engineering curriculum and if you're okay so if I convinced you that the 3d printer is robust it's ready to work now that if you buy this printer will work. The next thing that you might ask if you're not into 3D printing, well how do I learn all the other things? Good news is I've just put together a series of how to design for 3D printers using free SketchUp software. And so if you have this printer you can just watch my series of lessons on how to use SketchUp and you will be actually designing your own um, designing your own uh, devices for the 3D printer. Because that's the other thing that, that kind of the gripe I have about uh, 3D printers and in, you know in in particular teachers trying to incorporate 3d printers into the classroom so many times either the 3d printer doesn't work or it does work and all the students do is just go to one of the warehouses of designs and just download other people's designs and print them out if you're going to get a 3d printer or if you're going to use a 3d printer in a high school curriculum you need to be learning how to design or your students need to be learning how to design so i would suggest you go to the most excellent www uh, toptechboy.com and then go to the lessons on 3D printing and then go through all of my SketchUp lessons and I will show you how to design all types of cool things that you can print out on the 3D printer. All right, I'd love to hear your comments below. If you have been playing with 3D printers, what have you, what has your experience been? How much of a struggle has it been for you to get these printers working? Uh, have you been able to in effectively incorporate them into your classroom or into your uh, builds that you've uh, probably that you've been working just like to hear some feedback from uh, from other people and uh, leave your comments below if you like the video think about giving us a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel okay Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com and I will talk to you guys later